Ah, salam and good evening, worthy viewers. I'm Joshua Oro, the Mustang Prince, and welcome to Mustang Prince Oral Reports. Joining me once again is my good friend, Go Back Movie History host, Scott Addison. Hey, viewers. It's good to be here again. You guys may not know this, but I was the one who designed Scott's YouTube logo. So what are we looking at this time? Well, I'm glad you asked. I'm sure you're familiar with the 1992 animated smash hit, Aladdin. Well, yes. I've been talking about that movie and its sequels recently on my show. Same here. However... My blog on Aladdin was back in 2016, and I did the sequels back in 2017. Mm -hmm. Also, for those who have not seen our blogs, Aladdin is a beloved Disney classic from our childhood. And over the years, the movie has gained a cult following, gaining two directed video sequels, one of them being okay, and the other being a lot better. And, of course, Aladdin had a few levels throughout the Kingdom Hearts games. Plus, Aladdin became an animated TV show on the Disney Channel. As well as a stage show in Disney's California Adventure, which sadly got replaced by Frozen. Also, for those who are wondering... We have yet to see the Broadway adaptation. Speaking of which, on the other hand, my friends at Musical Theater Village got to do their own stage musical version back in 2013, where I was cast as a sultan. And it really was a fun experience for me back then. And just recently, Disney surprisingly gave us a live-action take on the classic movie. And that's what we're going to blog today. Released on May 24th, 2019, the movie is, well, Aladdin 2019. So, in the words of the genie, let's make some magic. Aladdin is a lovable street urchin whom one day meets Princess Jasmine, the beautiful daughter of the Sultan of Agrabah. After, after visiting her exotic palace, Aladdin finds a magical oil lamp hidden in the mysterious Cave of Wonders, which summons a powerful, wisecracking, larger-than-life genie. As Aladdin and the genie start to become friends, they will soon embark on a dangerous mission to stop the evil sorcerer Jafar from overthrowing young Jasmine's kingdom. So, what do we think of this version? Well, after seeing this movie four times, one of the times being in 3D, this movie was absolutely fantastic. For me, this isn't a bad movie, but it's not quite as good as the original. But there were some twists I liked more than others. But to further explain, Let's move on to Mustang Notes. On October 10, 2016, it was announced that Guy Ritchie, who previously directed the two recent Sherlock Holmes movies, would direct a live-action Aladdin film with John August penning the screenplay for Walt Disney Pictures and Dan Lin attached as producer. The studio said the movie would be an ambitious and non-traditional take on the tale of Aladdin, which would take much of the musical elements from the original film. On the non-traditional aspect, the studio planned for the film to be told in a non-linear format. On July 11, 2017, it was announced that principal production on Aladdin had been pushed back by a month to August 2017 due to struggles in finding the right actor to portray the titular role. Over 2,000 actors and actresses had auditioned for the roles of Aladdin and Jasmine, but that finding a male lead of Middle Eastern or Indian descent in his 20s 
could who could act and sing had proven difficult. On July 17th, 2017, it was announced that Disney had hired Vanessa Taylor to polish the original screenplay by August, specifically to do some character work and what is called script doctoring. Meanwhile, Richie in the studio focused on casting near the main roles was filming stated to start in August in London. Principal photography began on September 6, 2017 at Long Cross Studios in Surrey, England and wrapped on January 24, 2018. Part of the film was shot in Wadi Rum Desert, Jordan. The Royal Film Commission provided support to the production during filming and assisted to facilitating. Did I get that right? I think so. The Lodge Sticks reshoots and took place during August 2018. The film's production sets were designed by Game of Thrones production design, Gemma Jackson. Now, there are some parts in the movie that were pretty similar, but a tad different from the original film, but still scenes that we still enjoy. For example, we think the, the filmmakers did very well with the setting in Agrabah, because it really does look like a real Middle Eastern kingdom. Also, Aladdin's home, which is a large tower made of bricks, looks good too. Especially with the red tent inside. Plus, it has a great view like in the original. Plus, the desert, while we don't see too much of it, looks alright as well. Plus, the inside of the Cave of Wonders looks a tad smaller than the way it was in the original. Plus, the outside of the cave, well, looks like it was carved into a solid rock cliff instead of it being buried in the sand. Now, like Beauty and the Bees from two years ago, Alan Menken returned to provide the movie's score, and joining him was the late Howard Ashman and Tim Rice. However, for this movie, some of the songs from the original have been given new lyrics provided by La La Land songwriters Pasek and Paul. Also to note, the original movie did have some controversy which deeply offended the Arabs. For example, during the original version of Arabian Nights, one of the verses started out like this, but was later changed to this for its home media and soundtrack releases. However, this time they improved not only giving it new verses, but also one of them feels like it came from the TV show. Another song to talk about is One Jump Ahead. In this movie, it's used for a different purpose. Instead of Aladdin and Abu running away from the palace guards because he stole a loaf of bread, this song is used while Aladdin is rescuing Jasmine just because she was helping some hungry children. Also, unlike in the original film, which had two versions, this movie has three versions. That's right. And while the second version is pretty much the same as its animated counterpart, the third version, well, it's pretty interesting due to Aladdin realizing that he must tell Jasmine the truth about who he is. Also, the Prince Ali song is almost the same as its original counterpart, except um, the parade doesn't burst into the palace. Also to note, this song contains about a thousand dancers. If you don't believe me, be, just Google it. Now, the only songs unchanged from the original are Friend Like Me and A Whole New World. Plus, when I saw Alan Mankin in concert back in 2016, he did say that working with Tim Rice 
felt like a whole new world for him. Anyway, let's talk about the only new song in the film, which happens to be Jasmine's song, Speechless. In our opinion, this song does seem to fit Jasmine's character, and it does show how strong she is and how much she wants to help her people. Plus, I think it's equally as good as To Be Free from the California Adventure Show. Now, let's move on to the cast. Now, most of the actors in the film mostly consist of Middle Eastern actors, which is another improvement over the original's controversy. For instance, our main hero, Aladdin, is played by Egyptian actor Mina Massoud, who played Jared Mallet in the 2015 Canadian series Open Heart. Like in the original, Aladdin is a young orphaned thief and street rat who is smitten with the Sultan's daughter. To us, Aladdin is a great Disney hero, and in this version, it's no exception, except for the fact that Aladdin can be a bad liar at times throughout this film. Also, in one scene, Aladdin does use a Hunchback of Notre Dame quote before he takes Jasmine on a romantic carpet ride. But he was clever to outsmart Jafar during the ending climax. Aladdin's monkey sidekick, Abu, is reprised by veteran voice actor Frank Welker. who also reprises his role as Jasmine's tiger, Raja, and the Cave of Wonders. I do like Abu as a CGI character, but honestly, I didn't realize he was, it was the voice of Abu until you told me after we saw it in theaters. As for me, I think Abu looks pretty good as a traditional Middle Eastern monkey. Plus, he's very sneaky, mischievous, and there were times when Abu caused a bit of trouble. Like when he stole Jasmine's bracelet, and when he touched a ruby in the Cave of Wonders. Also, unlike in the original, Abu does not stay in his elephant form too much. Speaking of the cave, which while I do like how menacing Frank sounds as the cave, like in the original. He kind of sounds pretty similar to Megatron from the later Bayformers films. Plus, the way he talks when his eyes are glowing is pretty similar to his California Adventure version. Also, the entrance looks less tiger and more like a lion. As for Raja... Well, he seems to be one of the few characters unchanged from the original. However, he looks like a recycled Shere Khan from the 2016 Jungle Book film. Also, I liked the part where Raja licked Aladdin when he was in his Prince Ali attire. Maybe due to his sense of smell, I think. Next is Princess Jasmine, played by Naomi Scott, who got to be in the 2017 Power Rangers movie. Now, Jasmine is a feisty princess of Agrabah who wants to have a say in how she lives her life. Also, as mentioned during her song, she wants, she wants to help her people. Also... We thought it was pretty clever that she switched her name with her handmaiden, Dahlia's, pretty similar to what Padme did in Star Wars Episode One. Plus, unlike in the original, where she didn't know Elias' name when they first met in the marketplace, she actually does learn his name in this version. Also, the scene during Hurt and Jafar's wedding 
kind of made me think of a similar scene from Final Fantasy X. Next is the all-powerful genie of the lamp, played by Will Smith. To us, they couldn't have picked a better actor to play the genie than him. I mean, yes, he has been in a few serious films like Independence Day and iRobot, but he has been in several comedies like Shark Tale, the, the Men in Black films, and he'll be in the upcoming Spies in Disguise film. But still, Will Smith is no Robin Williams. Anyway, like in the animated film, Genie is a comedic, eccentric, and kindly character who has the power to grant three wishes to whoever possesses his magic lamp, like what he's holding. However, when it comes to wishes, he warns Aladdin to be specific with them. Also, I feel like Will Smith's genie is pretty similar to the DuckTales genie due to, well, his wish to become free and be human. But also, I feel like he's a lot better than, well, Kazam, that's it. What we like about this version of Genie is his ability to blend in to make himself look human, and some of the funniest things he does is shrink a few times, turn into a mummy, a fashionista, as well as help Aladdin dance during the Harvest Festival. But the absolute funniest part of the movie is when Genie rewinds the tape and shows him breaking the fourth wall. Our next character is Carpet. To us, Carpet is another character unchanged from the original, except for when Aladdin first meets him. That's true. You see, instead of teasing a boo, Carpet was stuck underneath a giant rock. Also, the way Carpet flies in this movie makes you feel like we're flying too, and I just pray that someday I'll get my chance to ride on the magic carpet of Aladdin at Walt Disney World. Someday. Next, we come to our villain, Jafar, played by Marwan Kanzari who got to be in the 2017 Mummy movie and the 2016 Ben-Hur film. Like his animated counterpart, Jafar is a nefarious and deceptive sorcerer, Grand Vizier of Agrabah, and the Sultan's chief advisor who is frustrated with the Sultan's way of ruling in the film, he devises a plot to overthrow the Sultan as the ruler of Agrabah by acquiring the genie's lamp. Not only that, but he also plans to conquer a kingdom that used to belong to Jasmine's mother. Plus, Jafar does all sorts of nasty things throughout this movie, like tricking Aladdin into giving him the lamp and trapping him in the Cave of Wonders, which felt like a scene that came from the first Indiana Jones film. He also attempts to drown Aladdin by trying tying him into a chair and pushing off the balcony. And plus, he even tries to mes mesmerize the Sultan with his snake staff. By the way, those scenes made me want to hide my face in fear. But on the other hand... At least it didn't happen to me when I played the Sultan on stage. Also, it was very disappointing that Jafar's version of Prince Ali 
was taken out of this version. Jafar's parent Iago is vocalized by Disney's good luck charm Alan Tudyk, who has been in every animated Disney film since Wreck It Ralph and Rogue One. To us, Iago is a tad similar to his animated counterpart. Yes, he does serve as Jafar's eyes and ears, but he acts like a traditional parrot. Plus, the scene where Jafar turns Yago into a giant parrot was pretty thrilling and badass. However, it does make us wonder, how the hey did Yago know that Aladdin was the diamond in the rough that Jafar was looking for? Next is Jasmine's father, the Sultan, who is played by Navid Nagabon. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. And he's been on CSI Miami. The Sultan is a wise and noble ruler who is eager to find a capable husband for his daughter. In this version, the reason why he does not let Jasmine leave the palace is due to the death of his wife. Which makes him very sympathetic that after seeing how Jasmine has grown up, he decides to pass on his role as Sultan. Plus, he was very grateful to Aladdin, not only for saving him from being mesmerized, but for stopping Jafar by sucking him into his lamp. Next is Jasmine's handmaiden, Dahlia, played by Nassim Pedrad, who got to be in Illuminations The Lorax and Despicable Me 2. Like the captain from the 2015 Cinderella movie, Dahlia is a new character that did not appear in the original film. In this version, Dahlia has been by Jasmine's side for years, and she looks out for her. Plus, she falls in love with Jeannie, and, to us, her friendship with Jasmine makes them like BFFs. And now let's move on to our final words. Well, like I said earlier, this version of Disney's Aladdin is a great movie, but it doesn't change my feelings about the original movie, despite its controversial flaws, that is. There are some moments that feel improved, and there are some parts that are very humorous and thought-provoking. Plus, this whole movie pretty much feels like a whole new world for us. Also, the soundtrack is very reminiscent to the original, and of course, Jasmine's song, Speechless, was a powerful new song that gave her more character development. Also, Disney did great with getting the right actors to play each character. This movie has a few problems, but this isn't a bad movie, but it's not as good as the original. It is our childhood after all. But there were some twists I liked more than others, and Will Smith at, is back to being entertaining in my opinion. I thought the 3D was handled better than Solo that when we reviewed that last year. But overall, if you have fond memories of the original Aladdin, then you should check out this film, and we think your kids might enjoy it too. So together, we give this film a rating of 97% out of 100. Well, that's all for today, viewers. I'd like to thank Scott for joining me again for this blog. Hey, anytime, Joshua. I, it really was fun doing this blog with you. So, for all of you at home, be sure to join me again next time. And, of course, check out Scott's YouTube channel if you get the chance. So, be sure to join us next time. Mustang, Mustang Power. Power.